basically just to give a quick introduction about etherspot how how did it came to existence and all uh, it all began uh, as a as a initiative called pillar wallet which was a evoa based uh, wallet which was started the team has been since 2017 and then uh, it was a evoa based wallet and then at the even even before there was wide adoption for you know uh, l1 and l2s uh, which which we which was not there at that time compared to what we have today uh, after that uh, we you know kind of uh, noticed and got to know the difficulties of using evoa based wallets and then we started the you know, we started the you know innovation for smart contract wallets and account abstraction since then to expand on this innovation uh, it was rebranded it was branded under the name called etherspot and since then uh, we've been working uh, on the account abstraction and chain abstraction front uh so yeah let's get started uh so in this as part of this this presentation i'll be i'll be walking all of you guys through the various products and services the etherspot has to offer and then later followed by a demo uh, on the modular sdk uh, which uh, which satish used for uh, his demo application on the ui i'll be i'll be walking through through the code and explaining how how it can be used to you know leverage account abstraction on any wallet or dapp for that matter uh, so yeah so these are the various uh, products and sort of products or services with uh, which etherspot has to offer uh, one being modular sdk which is completely open source developed on typescript and it is compliant with uh, erc7579 uh and uh, the it, it's completely modular wherein you can uh, you can have it has utility functions for you know uh, to sign user ops to you know validate user ops and and to send transactions and then it has utility functions since it's compliant with 7579 it has uh, you know utility functions to manage your modules which you install on top of your smart wallet uh, so yeah and then we have arca paymaster which is basically responsible to make possible the gasless transaction or the sponsored transactions uh, we have support for you know uh, token paymasters and verifying paymasters and multi token paymasters also which allows user to you know uh, not worry about gas at all maybe uh, pay gas using a uh, using a completely different token like uh, any usdc or usdt stable coins and we have multi token uh, paymaster support also wherein with one smart contract deployment you can choose to you know uh, e use whatever uh, erc20 tokens you have to sponsor for your gas and we have uh, skanda bundler which is a 4337 bundler client which uses alternate mempool to uh, relay the transactions bundle them together and relay it to the chain uh, which which also has the capabilities for p2p connections with other bundler clients using using the shared mempool architecture uh which basically makes the user ops more more resilient so that uh, with the, with the shared mempool architecture if even if uh, even if a bundler client is down it will relay relay your user operations to other bundler clients so that you know user operations thus the uh, you know success rate for user operations will uh, increase drastically uh and we have chain abstraction uh, chain abstraction solution which which is being worked upon uh using using the concept of concept of shared session session keys uh wherein user can user doesn't even have to worry about what chain they are on and then they can just express their intent as to what what is the desired output they want and then with using the concept of session keys and solver nodes we'll be able to uh so solver nodes will basically satisfy the user expressed intent and then uh, user does not even have to care about what chain they are on so that's that's being worked upon currently and we have multi chain apis wherein uh, you, there are lot of utility utility functions which any dapp or web3 product can ask for uh, be it getting your uh, balances for your account uh, or getting your getting the transaction history getting the transaction receipt or getting uh, you know the transaction routes or the smart contract routes which you would need to uh, make cross chain swaps and all of that that uh, we have apis for all of them on the multi chain level uh, we have support for over about uh, 30 plus chains including testnets uh, and then coming to transaction kit transaction kit is a react library which is built which uses prime stick and modular stick under the hood which gives you react components out of the box which you can use on the ui to 
sign tra sign transactions, sign user ops, estimate user ops, and then send transactions also. And then Prime SDK is uh, compatible with entry point v6, and modular SDK is uh, compatible with entry point v7. Uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, I think uh, Satish went through the components of account abstraction. Uh, these are the three major, uh, you know, uh, components for any abstract, uh, any account abstraction solution. Uh, we have smart contracts, uh, smart contract paymaster and bundler. Uh, with EtherSpot, uh, EtherSpot infrastructure services, uh, using uh, using smart EtherSpot pay, uh, EtherSpot paymaster, we can completely uh, enable enable uh, the gasless transactions. And we have social logins for better user onboarding and user experience. Uh, and then we have one-click transactions, enables one-click one-click action transactions, wherein uh, if you have, uh, let's say, multiple operations which you have to do, all of them can be performed uh, with one transaction click. And then we have session keys. The technique of session key is that uh, you authorize, you create a new session key pair on the fly, and then you authorize those keys to you know, uh, be valid for a certain certain spending limit or certain time period, and then uh, that session key, whatever you created, will have the uh, will have the capacity to you know withdraw funds e even without your intervention. So that's about session keys, and this session key is also being uh, extended to the chain abstraction solution, wherein uh, the solver solver node would upfront the liquidity. And then using the session key, whatever is created on on your uh, smart wallet, it can be used by the solver back once the user express user express intent is satisfied. And then we have recovery options on the EtherSpot uh, smart account, where wherein you can add guardians, always ensuring that your funds or assets, whatever is stored on your smart wallet, are always safe. And then we have sponsored gas again, uh, wherein user does not have to worry about. Uh, they can make gasless transactions and then or if they wish to pay using a separate erc20 tokens they can do that as well and then no need for seed phrases of course uh unlike the traditional eoa accounts you do not have to worry or, or keep track keep keep the store your uh, seed phrases at all uh so coming coming to the erc 7579 this is one of the prominent eips which you know enables the modular modular uh, smart account architecture uh, I, I'll just walk you through with this ERC what it what it does, which which is uh, you know important to have a have a good understanding on this. Uh, followed by the demo, which will uh, you know walk you through with how it is compliant with seven five seven nine and how we can manage modules using EtherSpot modular SDK. Uh, so with this ERC, the major benefit of this ERC is that it unifies and standardizes the smart wallet implementation. Prior to this EIP, what used to happen was uh, the smart contract uh, wallet implementation between organizations or between implementations used to differ a lot. Because of that, uh, there was a lot of friction uh, with you know integ integration. Uh, module developers would always have to worry that uh, if this module might not work with any other smart contract implementation, and it was almost impossible to you know uh, develop modules which was which would work and uh, easily integratable with all the smart wallet implementations. So this ERC makes sure that it gives us a unified standard for smart wallets, which will uh, help reduce the friction. And again, it increases the interoperability between account to account in interactions also because the uh, you know standard has been defined and then all of the smart smart wallet are expected to have those implementations in place and then this increases enhances the module composability also uh, as a result uh, user in a single user operation can invoke multiple modules to have the to achieve the complex uh, use cases to achieve complex use cases here yeah. uh, and then this uh, Sim simplifies the integration a lot, minima minimizes the fragmentation, and uh, it allows developers to get innovative and they don't have to worry about you know uh, if it would work on the uh, on every smart contract wallet as such. Yeah. Because the standard is in place, the uh, module developers can get innovative and then they can uh, you know develop the module so that it would work on all of the smart wallets which are compliant with seven five seven nine. So this is a diagram which I have, uh, which would briefly explain about how smart contract wallet uses various 7579 modules. 
uh, this is a dapp which would interact with the smart wallet 7579 compatible smart account and then this smart account can internally have uh, all of these kind of modules these are the four different kinds of modules which we have uh, one being validators hooks uh, executors and fallback handlers validators will validator modules would uh, always have funct functionalities like uh, to validate a user of let's say uh, if if a if a user is trying to if a smart account wallet is trying to execute a user of validator would have validator module would have the functionalities which would uh, make sure that the that all of the checks done are correct and then the user ops are validated and then we have hooks uh, which would contain the pre and the post check uh, post checks before any any execution happens like let's say if i want to execute a user operation before the user operation is executed uh, if a hook is installed to a smart wallet then the pre check is kicked in before is is executed before the ex actual execution happens and then once the execution is completed the post uh, check would kick in and then that execution would happen uh, which would make sure if you want to have like any let's say uh, a simple example would be if you want to have a event emitted from your smart contract that can be done easily using hooks uh, and then we have executors itself executors would define how a user operation should be executed uh, and then the fallback handlers which would basically uh, extend the fallback functionality of your of your smart contract wallet uh, uh, let's say the usual practice is to have a solidity fallback handler inside the code uh, and then if you have the 7579 compatible modules installed on your smart wallet you can define your own logic as to how you want that fallback function to function uh, yeah and then a little bit about uh, etherspot modular sdk it has extensive module support and then it is 7579 compatible which is safe and secure and it's fully open source developed uh, developed using typescript uh, just to give a quick and of uh, what are the modules that are widely being used you can just search 7579 mm, these are the various modules which are being under uh, which is uh, which are under active development or some of some of them which are already developed uh, if i can open multiple owner ecdsa this is one of the modules developed by etherspot which is a validator module uh, which wherein uh, you can have multiple owners for your same smart wallet and then we have uh, ERC20 session key validator. I'll be demoing this uh, in a bit, uh, which will basically have the functionality to you know uh, create a session key, and then using that session key, you'll be able to send ERC20s, uh, ERC20 tokens uh, without even having the signature of owner. Uh, so yeah, these are the two prominent, uh, two uh, important validators which which is developed by Etherspot, and then we have something called Credible Account Module also, which is being uh, which is under active development, and then uh, which is going to be used for chain abstraction solution. Uh, and moving forward, uh, and then I would like to speak a little bit about seven seven o two, and then head to the uh, modular SDK demo. Uh, 7702 being EIP 7702 being uh, one of the prominent EIPs uh, upcoming in the uh, featuring in the upcoming Pectra release of Ethereum, uh, which basically allows EOS to temporarily behave as a smart wallet and which is completely compatible with 4337. Uh, also, which is uh, which aligns aligns in line with the future roadmap of Ethereum on the account abstraction front. Uh, so wherein here uh, it introduces a new transaction type and then it adds a new field called contract code wherein you can just specify what is the contract code that you would need for your eoa and then that uh, contract code whatever is there would uh, would be replaced with your actual eoa itself and then which can you know benefit benefit all of the account abstraction features of course uh, and then once the transaction is completed the eoas would uh, come back to being the normal uh, external externally owned, owned account which it was uh, and then uh, there there is a similar eip uh, called uh, similar eip 3047 3074 uh, 7702 is better than this because uh, it is both forward and backward compatible with 437 and then uh, 3074 also has a requirement to add new opcodes like auth and auth call uh, 
which is which is not needed in case of uh, 7702 uh, with this uh, eos can you know uh, function as a smart 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 wallet for one particular transaction which can you know uh, further increase the uh, user onboarding and reduce the gas fees also and then this is the rlp recursive length prefix uh, transaction object wherein uh, these are the old ones which we are which we already have the chain id nuns priority fee the uh, 1559 gas parameters and then we have gas limit and then we have access list these are all which these are all something which is already there and then we add something known as the access list wherein you specify the contract code and then uh, the signature of your eoa itself which is authorizing saying uh, override my eoa with this particular smart contract code for this transaction uh, so yeah this is a brief diagram about how uh, eip 7702 works uh, this is your smart contract account byte code and then with e the adv major advantage with 7702 is that you do not have to incur for smart smart contract wallet deployment itself you can uh, always you can just override your uh, eoa with the smart account wallet code the byte code itself and then still be able to do uh, you know 4337 transactions uh, so we have the user over here and once he signs a user up we will have the smart account byte code overridden and then we will have something called as delegation address to which the uh, transaction has to be delegated once the signature is done the bundler would check for the 7702 signature and then once it's done the necessary uh, access list whatever i showed in the slide previously would be would be added to the transaction and then the transaction is carried out on that delegation address which the user signed on top of uh, so that that is how the eap 7702 works uh, that's all i had for the slides let's now go uh, go to my vs code editor and i'll uh, run you walk, walk you through with the uh, how you can use you know the Etherspot modular SDK to perform user operations.